where we'll talk about cell size and the shape of cells and your activity on, uh, in your notebooks where you looked at the size of cells and where you were calculating that surface area to volume ratio is very, very important. Um, you need to be able to do those calculations um, with a calculator on the exam, on my exams and both the AP exam. So make sure you familiarize yourself with the formula sheet where you can find that, uh, where you can find those formulas and then also um, just be sure you know how to use them with the calculators you will be provided. So the whole reason for doing that activity was to look at how the size and the shape of the cell, um, how they are both important um, in determining whether or not the cell is going to be efficient. So in order to understand that, we're going to be looking at the surface area to, to volume ratio. This is going to allow us to predict how efficient a cell will be. Um, this is basically the efficiency of exchanging material with the environments. So, the surface area to volume ratio is a way to predict that efficiency. And when we're looking at cells, the higher the surface the area to volume ratio, the, the more efficient a cell is going to be. So on page 95, you graphed or, or have a graph of how the surface area to volume ratio changes as the radius of the cell increases or the size of your cell increases. Um, and so this idea, this, this, this correlation, this re the relationship here explains why cells are so small. Okay, and I'm just going to put a note here, see page 95, that is the graph. Um, and so we know that cell size um, is going to affect that efficiency. So the structure of the cell, the size of the cell, will affect how efficiently it functions. The other thing that we want to look at is the cell shape. And um, you guys are working on some calculations where you're looking at various columns. And when you compare the various columns and their uh, surface area to volume ratio, or how their surface area to volume ratio changes, um, you can still have a cell very large as long as it's a particular shape. Um, and so that column shape um, cell, column shaped cell, can, um, can uh, keep from taking a hit um, as it gets larger, that efficiency, that efficiency doesn't go down as much if it, we were to use, for example, um, a cube-shaped uh, cube cell um, or a sphere-shaped cell. If you needed a cell to be larger, that column shape does lose that surface area to volume ratio, but it doesn't lose it as quickly as the, column, as the, as the cube or the sphere-shaped cell. Um, and so that's why you can have those column-shaped cells such as microvilli um, that can have, that can be larger and still maintain a high surface area to volume ratio. Um, and so make sure that on my exams, FRQs, the AP exams, that you can always use numbers to back up these claims. And the claim I'm talking about is that surface area to volume ratio. If we were going to compare two cells of different sizes or two cells of relatively the same size of different shape, you've got to be able to say if we compare a sphere of one radius to a sphere of eight radii, um, we, we use those numbers to prove that the surface area to volume ratio of the smaller cell is higher Therefore, the cell is more efficient than the larger cell. Now, some cells can overcome, can overcome this predicament, and we'll talk about eukaryotic cells and how compartmentalization 
or having specialized locations within the cell can still maintain the efficiency of the cell in order to do its everyday business. Thanks for watching.